What's up, Dave from Head Games? Today we're gonna work on an R&D project with our buddies from Full Rice. These guys have been making horsepower for a very long time. They're our partners in horsepower, and we're gonna make an exhaust manifold test on the new Raptor. So we got a couple designs, we're gonna put on the flow bench, and we're gonna see how they do. Hey, I'm Jeff from Full Race, and today I am here at Head Games in New Jersey working on our new F-150 turbo manifold. So this is um, basically a representation of it. We design it in CAD, and we print it on a rapid prototype printer, which basically prints layer by layer. And this is a really cost-effective way to make a prototype that can be tested on the flow bench. We know what it does in the computer simulation. We're happy with it. Um, but we just want to verify it in the real world and then confirm that the flow bench is matching up to the software. So, so here's a comparison of the stock manifold, the log style cast iron, versus the full race uh, individual runner manifold. And you can really see the shape of the runners here compared to the stock one. This is truly a log where all three runners just kind of enter into this T-shaped um, runner to the turbine inlet and uh, there really isn't a lot of aerodynamic um, improvements or benefits I should say here compared to a tubular manifold but it, it's very strong it's very thick and um, it's very compact so the key that Ford was looking for when they developed this thing was early torque and to get the catalytic converters up to temp real quickly and it's also very inexpensive I think Ford sells this for a hundred dollars so uh, for mass production it makes a lot of sense. And Ford makes one of these, or two of these, every 13 seconds. So when you're doing something that high volume, it makes a lot of sense to use this application, or use this style. Design. But obviously there's improvements to be had by divorcing the flow. So really that was the, the main effect here, is keep the cylinder exhaust pulses completely separate from one another. And um, also something that's very commonly seen is the, the core shift or the design for whatever reason has an outlet that's very small on these exhaust manifolds. So we just make the port match the size of the turbine inlet. And a lot of guys will commonly port this thing out to match the size of the turbo. The turbo inlet is obviously quite a bit bigger, but um, we just increased that and then shaped the collector to, to merge into that shape. So I don't know if you can see that, that comparison, but it's a pretty substantial difference in overall outlet uh, area. Getting up this piece of shit, trying to flow. So we gotta put a spark plug in it, put some valves in it, put some check springs in it. So that way it doesn't leak when we put it on the flow bench and we can get some accurate numbers. We made this thing many, many years ago. Uh, it's actually for a 2JZ. There's two aluminum pieces. Um, I make different ones for different heads. Stick it on here, that way. Open both valves at the same time, and we just have to set the geometry up so it opens up the valve and we can get an accurate number. So now we bolt the fixture down to the flow bench and stick the cylinder head on top, and we'll be good to go. So Ryan Brown made sure that we had his personal petroleum jelly to use on our flow bench. This will ensure that it seals. So sometimes we have O-rings, we have other ways of doing it, but with our, uh, I don't know what the material is, it's phenolic, plastic, whatever it is, we use some good old petroleum. But Ryan has the best petroleum. First, we are gonna flow it without a manifold. Get a baseline, and then we'll move on to the other manifolds.
did our testing. We did a stock in a stock exhaust manifold, and we did the first version of the full race exhaust manifold. And what we learned was that we actually moved the air by checking with our velocity probe. The air was only here, and now we have it on this corner as well. We also, we increased the CFM by about 10 CFM under the curve. So when I say under the curve, it only has 400 lift. And from 100 to 350 lift, we actually picked up CFM and we increased the velocity. It's kind of weird. <laughs> Another R&D project done at Head Games. Hit the like button, subscribe to see a lot more where that came from. See you next time.